Okay, y'all. Just drop whatever you're doing and turn up your radio, because it's time for Body Love. My name is Vanessa Love, and I'd like to tell you, no, I need to tell you how my life got turned around, changed completely. I want to start with how things were back when I was, well, when I was the way I used to be. I'll start off with the last day when everything still seemed okay. I was working at Body Love, that's our family beauty salon, with my best friend, Rosalind Armstrong. It was the end of a day that seemed just like any other. Everything was fine on the surface. Well, how about two o'clock? Great. I've got you down for two on Friday. See you then. Who was that, Roz? That was Mrs. Johnson coming in Friday at two. Don't you just love her? She is so sweet. And she's been coming in here for as long as I can remember. Getting the same hairstyle. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) I'm serious. Your mama started this place when? 20 years ago? Longer? Well, I was in high school. (laughs) I remember that. And I bet you anything Mrs. Johnson was the first customer back then. Wanted her hair done the same way she wants it now. (laughs) Still, you gotta love loyal customers. Amen to that. Only I wish they didn't all have to come the same day. I had nine people today. Me too. But I'm not complaining. No, me either. For a change, we're really doing good. Mouse told me we've already just paid all the bills for the month. Mm-hmm. And right this minute, I feel like we've earned every penny of it. Because I am just plain worn out. Ross, you've been tired a lot lately. Maybe we're working you too hard. I mean, with your diabetes. Now, Vanessa, I am tired because I have been on my feet all day long. You can leave diabetes out of it. All right. Just trying to help. I know you are. Right now, we can help each other by locking this place up and going home. So... Saul, supper's ready. Oh, what are we having tonight? Chicken fried steak and tater tots. That's all, Maya? I'm going to need something else just besides that. Saul, you're not going to starve? You're as bad as your little brother. Now help me set the table. Mama's going to be home any minute. Oh, all right. Um, how many are we going to... Just three. I had to feed TJ an hour ago because he was acting like he was going to faint if I didn't. What about Dad? Did he say he was going to work, have to work late? That's what he said. You believe him? I believe he won't be here for supper. Now, whether or not he's working... He's working late. He's got to be. The last time he told us, night after night, that he was having to work late, he was really over that bar, what do you call it? Waxies. Every night. I know where he was, but that was nearly a year ago. He's really through with the drinking this time. I know he is. But you know how he is. Something will set him off again, and he'll go back to being like he was all... home, and something smells good! Hey, Mama! What's new at Body Love? Roz and I did 18 heads of hair between us. I am about ready to drop. Well, I got your meat and potatoes here, so maybe that'll help some. What do you do today, Saul? Mm, Not much. Mama Mabel kept TJ while Maya was at work, so me and Kevron spent the day just shooting hoops, you know, trying to enjoy the last part of summer before I got to go back to school. And TJ's had his supper? Yes, ma'am. He couldn't wait. And Sonny called to say that he had to work late. I, I wish you wouldn't call your father Sonny. I know, Mama. I, I guess if he acted more like a father to me when I was growing up. I, I know, I know. Sorry I brought it up. Let's just, let's just enjoy the meal, okay? Sunday, we were starting to think you were never coming back to the shop. You've been at the Turner house all this time? George, you wouldn't believe it. We're still not finished. I knew that lady's big old house was going to be trouble first time I ever saw it. Hey, all that wiring's got to be brought up to code by somebody. I'm just glad we got the contract. Well, me too, but these 12-hour days getting old after a while. Starting to wonder if maybe I shouldn't be looking for another job. Well, don't say that too loud, son. Um, why not? Come into the office for a second. 
George, am I in some kind of trouble? No more than the rest of us. I've been hearing bits and pieces, you know, nothing official, but it sounds like we're going to have some layoffs. Uh, what for? I, I just heard Franklin saying just the other day how good things are going. Said we were having the best year ever. I don't understand it either, but that's that's what I'm hearing. But look, I, I'm going down to Wax's for a couple of drinks. You, you want to come? Um, no. Thanks, George, but I don't think so. Sonny, one drink is not going to kill you. Franklin the Electric, Sonny Baxter. Sonny, it's me. Oh, hey, baby. Baby, that better be your wife. Hey, I'll be at Wax's if uh, you change your mind. Hey, Nessa. I was just wondering when you think you'll be home. Mm, I still got to do some maintenance on some tools, so it's going to be another hour. Then I may go back down to Body Love. Somebody just called and said all the lights were on in there. Yeah, well, b- baby, don't don't go down there alone. I won't go inside if it looks suspicious, okay? I'll call the police. Are you okay? You sound kind of upset. No, just tired. And that's all it is? Well, I don't want to talk about it on this phone. I'll tell you all about it when I get home. Stay tuned for more Body Love, right after this. And now, back to Body Love. Oh, I should have knew somebody would... Roz, it's me! Vanessa, girl, what are you doing out this time of night? Never mind me, what are you? Oh, hey, Miles. Hey, Vanessa. Roz and I are just going through some of our old payment records. My tax filing forms and stuff like that. In the middle of the night? Oh, yeah. At our age, this is what we call a big romantic evening. (laughs) (laughs) She only married me because I took business math in college. Now, you're the one who volunteered to keep our books in order. Mm, You know that's right. We probably have gone bankrupt way back when if it wasn't for you. That's true. He lets me handle all his money at home, and he handles all of my money here. That way we both stay honest. (laughs) (laughs) I see. We've been here trying to figure out we might could afford some better insurance for you and your kids and some extra insurance for us. Miles has been calling around to find out what we could afford. I'd sure like that. I worry every time one of the kids gets sick. My diabetes is costing us more than we got. We just like a lot of other folks. The insurance Miles gets from the factory, and that covers us for lots of stuff, but not everything. I never thought about what it was costing you. I mean, your insulin, doctor's visits, and all. Still. I know, I know. You both stayed on my back for years about how I need to be more careful about what I eat and drink and how how much I exercise. and And keeping your doctor's appointments. But you don't do the things you don't want to do. We can't force you. I hear what you're saying. But every time I go to the doctor, I miss a half a day's work waiting at the doctor's office. And then she's always on my back. That don't make me feel any better. She's on your back because you're, you aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing to take care of yourself. You don't know what it's like. Can't eat this. Can't do that. I'm supposed to stick myself with that monitoring gizmo and then stick myself with a needle full of insulin. I know, but if that's what you got to do, if you want to stay alive... Y'all just making too much out of this. Um, I'm just tired. You should go home. Get off your... Roz, your feet! I know, they're a little swollen. It's these shoes. They're cutting off my circulation. That's why my feet swell up. Never mind that. (laughs) Miles, here, you and Vanessa read all of these insurance papers. I can't make it out. I guess I'm going to have to get me some of those little drugstore glasses. Y'all excuse me for one second while I go to the back. Miles, she's not doing too good. Nessa, I'm scared to death. Sometimes I wake in the night just to make sure she's okay. I got to get her to go back to the doctor. Oh, so you decided to wake up after all. Mm, Come on, Maya. It's only 8 o'clock, and I didn't get much sleep last night. Well, neither did I. Sit down. I made you some bacon and eggs. Oh, yeah, thanks. Mm, Dad already going to work? I think he was gone before any of us got up. So, Mama's sleeping late? Yeah. TJ's in there with her. 
I gotta get them both up in a few minutes. Mm -mm. This is all because Dad and Mom were up all half the night fighting about something. They were not fighting, Saul. Just talking. Ha! You were up listening, too? Well, I couldn't make out what they were saying. But it sure sounded important. I, I'm just praying Sonny hasn't started drinking again. If he had, he wouldn't have come home at all. Or else we would have heard them fighting. The whole neighborhood would have heard them fighting. I'm telling you, he's through with all that. He said it's over, and I believe him. He said that before, Saul, and it wouldn't be so bad if he didn't get so mean when he's drunk. So mean and crazy and dangerous. Turns into a whole different person, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I know. Then I wonder what they're, they were up talking about. I don't know, but I'll bet you anything we'll be hearing about it soon, one way or another. Well, hey, I was starting to wonder if you were coming. Morning, Roz. Maya let me sleep late. She knew I didn't have anybody scheduled until 9.30. You and Sonny have a late night? Yeah. He, he, he didn't get home until real late, and then we, we had a lot to talk about. Well, I hate to say it, but you and I have got a lot to talk about, too. Oh, Lord. Now, just go ahead and sit down. I want you having one of your panic attacks over nothing. Or not much, anyway. But uh, Miles and I had a long talk last night, too. And I had to agree that, well, I'm, I'm not getting any better. I'm tired all the time. My feet get swollen, and sometimes my vision gets blurry. Now... <laughs> You know, it ain't safe for me to be cutting people's hair when I can't see right. Sounds like you're saying you need to quit. No, not quit. But maybe I do need to take a break for a while. And Miles, he ran all the numbers, and I can tell you the salon might not make as much money with you running it by yourself, but you're still going to be okay because you've got Sonny's job to keep your family going, right? Vanessa. Now you better be here again next time to hear what's gonna happen on Body Love. Friends, this is Reverend Higgins. I'm Vanessa's pastor and one of the people in her life that you'll be hearing more about as the Body Love story unfolds. But today I want to take just a moment to ask if you heard what was happening with Rosalind. She knows she has diabetes, and her doctor has told her how to take care of it. But it sounds like Rosalind has decided that all that is just too much trouble, as if it doesn't really matter whether or not she follows instructions. Well, what do you think about that? Isn't taking care of your health one of the most important things you can do? Isn't that worth almost any amount of trouble? Your body is the only one you have. I'm Reverend Higgins, and I'll see you again after the next episode of Body Love. This was Body Love, Episode 1, written by the Body Love Writers Group, recorded at Boutwell Studios, Jeff McKee, engineer, and directed by Will York. Featured in the cast were Shalithia Williams, Vanessa Anderson, Luane Childry, Audrey Quinn, James McCarty Jr., Rick Lewis, and Lee Shackelford, with Quentin Cockrell bringing today's health message. Body Love is a project of the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health in conjunction with the UAB Department of Theater. Dr. Chris Ellis is medical consultant. Lee Shackelford and Yoko Kawamura are producers. Dr. Connie Kohler is the executive producer. Support for the Body Love Radio Drama Project is provided by a matching grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Princeton, New Jersey, along with the Joseph S. Bruno Charitable Foundation, the Community Foundation of Greater Birmingham, the Carefree Fund of the Community Foundation of Greater Atlanta, and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama. Additional support for this episode was provided by the Alabama State Council on the Arts. Find out more about Body Love on our website, www.bodylove.org.